In our feature segment today, drones. We came to know the term first from the war in Afghanistan and Iraq. Their use in U.S. airspace is coming. The Federal Aviation Administration is developing regulations permitting commercial use of unmanned aerial vehicles by 2015. At present, drones are prohibited from flying commercially. While the U.S. may be a leader in military drones, it's not a leader in civilian use. In Japan, 40 percent of the country's rice is already crop dusted using drones. Market to Market's Josh Bittner has more. Technological advancements have unleashed amazing inventions in recent years. It's doubtful any single device has made a bigger impact or been more widely embraced than smartphones. And with minimal modification, the components housed within many handheld devices are capable of controlling autonomous aircraft. While critics advise a more cautionary take it slow approach, proponents say the convergence of communication, aviation and other scientific know-how is accelerating at breakneck pace. I make the comment all the time, this technology is advancing really by the week. With increased affordability and convenience, several industries including law enforcement, disaster assessment and even commercial delivery are anticipating game-changing advantages via aerial drone technology. And while the term drones may conjure up controversial images of war machines performing strikes with surgical precision overseas, their domestic application also is subject to intense scrutiny. When you fly this piece of equipment and you make a mistake or do something not responsible, there's going to be consequences. Farming may be better suited than most industries to realize immediate beneficial results from an eye in the sky. While most crop scouting still is conducted on the ground, an elevated perspective offers a significant increase in agricultural data. This is not a toy. It won't be long till it'll be rare for a farmer and agronomist not to have one of these at their disposal. And as it's flying, I can easily just move it around. Advanced cameras mounted on unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs, have been providing highly useful information to early adopters. Producers embracing precision agriculture, who already rely on GPS to guide tractors and apply chemicals, are rapidly adopting drones of various pedigrees. With the farming community abuzz about the cost savings these devices could yield, the future is looking up in rural America. We're seeing uh, students get picked up as instructors or trainers, and they're all kind of waiting for that commercial market to open here in the U.S. Currently, profit-oriented drone flights are illegal so widespread operation is grounded. But some research institutions have been granted limited waivers as they seek incorporation of UAV programs into their curriculums. The Federal Aviation Administration is engaged in the arduous task of drafting a comprehensive set of rules that would integrate these flying gadgets into the national airspace by 2015. If we look up in the sky right now, we can see there's a private pilot out here. In the interim, universities and hobbyists can fly but not above 400 feet. And these discretionary flights generally take place over private property with a landowner's permission. Safety and privacy concerns are paramount to when the government formulates how to issue permits for commercial operation. Legislation primarily aimed at minimizing police overreach has been introduced in a number of states. And while organizations like the American Liberties Union claim that the use of drones within U.S. airspace could lead to a surveillance state. Some industry experts don't see an outlet for such data. Is it possible to have 24-hour surveillance over somebody and invade their privacy? Yes, but it costs millions and billions of dollars, and there's not a market for that in the commercial world. According to a March 2013 report, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International claims that drones will add over 100,000 jobs and $82 billion to the U.S. economy by 2025. With six federal drone test sites recently selected, Flyover Country offers the luxury of wide open spaces to take UAV implementation to the next level. The United States is not a leader in this technology right now. But we soon will be if the FAA removes some of the uh, stumbling blocks. Drones of various shapes and sizes were on display this fall as Kansas State University hosted a conference on unmanned aerial systems. Entrepreneurs and experts from across the nation descended on the Little Apple. 
Home of a proud tradition in aviation, K-State and its affiliate institutions provided an opportunity for investors and enthusiasts alike to discuss the range of challenges and opportunities for the emerging industry. So it's a win-win scenario. With abundant enthusiasm for agricultural use, some agronomists claim drones could also be a plus for the environment. We can improve our ability to reduce the amount of runoff that go into our lakes from our agriculture, and we can improve the ability of getting nitrogen or nutrients in the places it's needed to increase the yield. So we'll increase food, the amount of production we produce on the same amount of land, even if we don't increase the amount of land we're planning on. Savvy producers have already employed key pieces of new technology to their advantage. Townline Farms is able to make timely, cost-saving water management decisions by probing soil moisture levels of its irrigated ground in central Illinois. Adding Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, or NDVI, imagery has provided an improved, nearly on-demand glimpse into plant health at any time of the growing season. We were actually hiring an airplane to fly, and they would get us one shot, and it would be right before tasseling, which in this area is mid-July to early July and we had one chance at it to get one shot a year. The airplane that flew and took this image, without question, was a, I would say, at least a $100,000 airplane that cost several hundred dollars an hour to fly. With a background in farming and aviation, Chad Colby purchased his own quadcopter for less than $10,000 and collaborates with growers in his area. Colby is the integrated solutions manager at Cross Implement in Minear, Illinois. The John Deere dealership's progressive clients eventually hope to use intelligence captured by UAVs to pinpoint underperforming areas on their farms. I could fly the drone to that spot, take a photo of it, and from the headlands of the field, the grower could look at that, that data and then decide on an action. Do I have a hybrid problem? Do I have a weed issue? Do I have an insect infestation? Do I have a water problem? Hundreds of issues. And this is a huge tool for a grower, huge, huge tool for a grower. Spectral imaging lets you see the wavelengths that you don't normally see. By shining a spotlight on specific challenges instead of casting a wide net, decisions from when to plant to cutting back on costly chemicals and additives can save farmers time and money. We used to farm by the field. Uh, as we go forward, uh, we've farmed by the acre. Now we're going to probably farm by 10 square meters. So that'll be kind of our, our size of our field and we'll just have hundreds of thousands of little fields attached to one another. But as the equipment goes through, it'll adjust based on that micro environment. And as optical technology continues to march forward, the amount of data a farmer will be able to reap from a drone could increase exponentially. Well, today, we're still putting the pieces of that puzzle together so they fit right. I think in the future, it'll be more of a seamline process. You'll buy a drone, especially designed for ag. It'll come in a box, it'll be all ready to go. I think that's the stuff we'll see, and it's, it's tremendously exciting. For Market to Market, I'm Josh Bittner. And you can watch this story on agricultural drones again on our Farm Week website. That's farmweek.msucares.com. You can also watch Farm Week stories on our Farm Week USA Facebook page and YouTube. We'll have a link to the Market to Market website where you can see the original story as well as read the script. We're also available at twitter.com slash farmweek. And Layton, they're coming, they're coming, just like smartphones, they're coming. <laughs> <laughs> Be interesting to see what 2015 brings.